Hi everyone, welcome to Real Science Challenge. I'm Kent Louie, science teacher and talking head, broadcasting from beautiful Vancouver, Canada. And today I want to share three things I'm doing to teach CER this year. Now CER stands for Claim, Evidence and Reasoning. But first, I want to thank Kathleen Gillis who gave me the idea for this episode in a comment she posted asking how I teach CER. So long story short, the three things that are working for me in teaching CER is scaffolding using prompts and sentence starters, applying these prompts through everyday informal examples, and practicing using short and simple investigation questions. Now I'll dive deeper into each, but before I do so, handouts for this episode are available at realsciencechallenge.com EP34. And be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. When scaffolding CER for students, I use the following three prompts. Now for claims, I tell students to give me the simple answer to the research question of the lab. For evidence, I tell students to start by using the phrase, according to my data, and then to summarize the important observations that supports their claim, and to include measurements and numbers. And for reasoning, I tell students that anything that requires the word because automatically falls under reasoning. Now I write down these prompts everywhere when students first learn to use the CER framework. I write it in labs, on test questions, and even on the board during class discussion questions. Now I don't think you can scaffold this enough. Yes, student work may feel formulaic at first, but you know students need structure when learning a new way of doing something. Just like the five paragraph essay provides structure in essay writing in English class. We take these prompts and use them to analyze and work through CR examples. For example, I ask students which part of the body is the most painful to get stung by a bee. And then I tell them about the scientist who performed an experiment to answer that question. Now this scientist's claim is that the most painful part of the body to get stung by a bee is the nostrils and the upper lip. And according to his data, the pain scale results, yes he had a pain scale, for both regions, the nostril and lip, always ranked the highest. And for reasoning, this scientist suggested that because lips and nostrils are openings to the body, they have more nerve endings, and this makes bee stings more painful in these areas. This year, I also used this worksheet to teach CER, which gets students to underline, circle, and bracket out the claim, evidence, and reasoning for three CER statements. Now, each statement here is an argument for who the most successful movie director is. Uh, one statement claims that Spielberg is the most successful. Another claims that James Cameron is the most successful. And yet another claims that the Russo brothers are the most successful. Now, a completed worksheet would look like this, with the yellow highlighting the claims, the blue highlighting the evidence, and the pink highlighting the reasoning. Finally, I have students write CER statements by doing simple lab activities that have very clear investigation questions and that provide data that is straightforward to analyze. You know, I performed the beaker lab I mentioned in my previous ex episode, which has students determine whether beakers of the same size have the same mass. I've also had students use a hot plate and a beaker of water and a thermometer to determine whether doubling the power setting on a hot plate will double how quickly the water heats up. Now, students can easily record and analyze this data, and they can provide a logical explanation for the results to these questions as well, which is the reason why I love these simple activities so much. Now this year, I also had students do a volume lab to practice CR as well, but I'll talk about that in a future episode. That's how I'm doing it this year, and it's still a work in progress. So how do you do it? How do you teach CR? Please share a comment below with your strategies. I'm always interested to know what's out there and what people are doing. Again, handouts are available at realsciencechallenge.com 
EP34. And please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thanks for watching, and let's talk science again soon.